Today in the workshop, we're taking a detailed look at the Arduino Nano 33 IoT, an updated version of the original Nano. We'll see how to use the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, IMU, and real-time clock with some simple demo sketches. We'll also look at some important differences between this board and the original Nano. Everything's new around here today, so welcome to the workshop. Well, hello and welcome to the workshop, or I should say welcome back to the workshop. It's been a little while, and what I've been doing in the gap between the last video and this video has been installing a lot of new equipment here in both the workshop and in the office outside of the workshop where I produce all of the videos and articles. Now, this new equipment is eventually going to help me make more videos, make them quicker, streamline the process, but at the current moment, moment it's the opposite i'm learning to use all of this stuff some of these devices have instruction manuals that exceed 100 pages and photography and filming is not my field of expertise so i am learning a lot so i will apologize in advance for a few bugs and things that are bound to crop up in this video i know that the lighting inside this room still needs a little bit of work you're still getting reflections in my glasses etc but one of the upshots of adding all of this new equipment in addition to streamlining things has been that the channel is now at at 4k so if you've ever wanted to see a resistor in really high definition then this is the channel for you now obviously a channel of this nature an electronics channel does not really need to be at 4k you could see this stuff just fine in HD in fact you could probably see it just fine in 720p but the upgrade to 4K also came with a number of advantages in terms of the capabilities of the equipment. And sometimes, even though you've got things working at a pretty good level, it does make a lot of sense to move up to the latest, greatest stuff in order to add a number of new features. And that is my segue into the topic of today's video. Now, we have an older device, which is the Arduino Nano that we know and most of us us love a device that is very similar to the Arduino Uno and it has been upgraded now it has been upgraded with four different Arduino nanos and we're going to take a look at one of those nanos today the Arduino Nano 33 IoT now as the name would imply this is a device that has been made specifically for IoT projects but can also be used with a number of other different projects so let's go and take a look Look at this new Arduino Nano, newer Arduino Nano. It was released a couple of years ago. And let's see what we can do with the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. The Nano 33 IoT is a member of the Arduino Nano 33 family. Other family members include the Nano Every, the Nano 33 BLE, and the Nano 33 BLE Sense. The Nano 33 IoT uses the SAMD21G 32-bit microcontroller. Other members of the family use different microcontrollers. This device has the same form factor and pinout as the original Arduino Nano. You should note that this is a 3.3 volt device and it is not 5 volt tolerant, so you can't just plug and play for the original Nano. The Nano 33 IoT has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities using the U-Block's NINA W102 module. It also includes an LSM 6DS3 IMU inertial measurement unit. Now here are the pinouts of the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. You will notice that these pinouts are identical to the pinouts on the original Arduino Nano. However, a couple of the pins have some considerations. One of these pins is the VUSB pin. This is the USB voltage out and it is generally 5 volts when the Nano is powered by the USB adapter. However, in order for this to work, you need to have a jumper on the bottom labeled VUSB shorted out. This has been done because the Nano is a 3.3 volt logic device and so it's a safety consideration of not immediately sending out 5 volts. 
Another two pins to become aware of are the analog to digital converter 4 and 5 outputs. As with the original Nano, these are also the SDA and SCL for the I2C connection. However, on the Nano 33 IoT, there are internal pull-up resistors because the I2C bus is internally used. Therefore, these pins are not going to be very good as analog inputs. You should also note that the same pulse width modulation capable pins on the original Nano are also PWM capable on the Nano 33 IoT. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability is provided by the Ublox Nina W102 Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. This module is based upon the popular ESP32 chip. It provides both Bluetooth and Bluetooth Low Energy 4.2 and Wi-Fi at IEEE 802.11b, G, or N. This device has an internal 2.4 GHz antenna and no provision for connecting an external antenna. The LSM6DS3 is an Inertial Measurement Unit, or IMU. This device has a 3-axis accelerometer. It also has a 3-axis gyroscope. The device uses the I2C bus and has a slave address of hexadecimal 6A. This is the reason, incidentally, for the internal pull-up resistors on the I2C bus. The processor at the heart of the Nano 33 IoT is the SAMD21G 32-bit microcontroller, the same processor that we use in the Ciduino Xiao. This device runs at 48 MHz. It has a built-in USB connection, so it doesn't require an external device for USB. It features SIRCOM to allow for multiple hardware serial ports. It also has an internal real-time clock. The Nano 33 IoT is one of the Arduino boards that is suitable for use with the Arduino IoT Cloud. So let's go and take a look at the Nano 33 IoT. Now here I have an Arduino Nano 33 IoT board. Actually I have two of them. This is how they come out of the box. You get the board just unsoldered right now because it can also be used as a surface mount board and you also get a set of the DuPont pins you can use to solder it. It also comes with a warranty card over here and the most important thing of course is it comes with a number of neat little Arduino stickers. Now I've got another Arduino 33 IoT over here that I've soldered up and beside it I've got a regular Arduino Nano just so you can see the comparison and they do indeed have the same form factor. In fact, you could take a device like this one, which is just an adapter to let you connect screw terminals onto your Nano and use it with the Nano 33 IoT. So all of your prototyping tools that you used with this will be valid for this and they even keep the same pin out. Now let's take a closer look at one of these boards over here. As you can see, it's a very nice quality build, as you might expect from Arduino. And on the back of the board over here, let me turn this around so you can see it, you will see over here we have a little jumper area, and that is the VUSB jumper. If you want to activate the VUSB, which gives 5 volts out when powered by a USB connector, you need to put a bit of solder over that. But otherwise, other than soldering the pins onto it, it's ready to go and experiment with. And so let's start experimenting with our Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Okay, now that we've taken a look at the Arduino Nano 33 IoT, it's time to start using this little module. And the first thing we're going to need to do is to set up our development environment. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now, in order to use the Arduino 33 IoT with the Arduino IDE, you're going to need to install a new board. And you do that via the Boards Manager. So go up into Tools and go down to where it shows you which board you currently have selected. In my case, it was an ESP32 CAM, and go to the Boards Manager. 
And now over here, what we're going to need to install is the Arduino Sam D boards. Now you can search for it up over here, but you may notice it's actually the fourth selection down here on the list. And so we just have to click install here to install this boards manager. Now after you've installed this, another thing you're going to want to do is install a number of libraries. If you recall, the Arduino 33 IoT has a number of different features including Wi-Fi, an inertial measurement unit, and a real-time clock and Bluetooth. And all of these will require libraries. So we're going to do that with our library manager. So we go into Sketch, and we go into Include Library, and go into our Manage Libraries to open the Library Manager. Now there are a number of libraries to install. I'll do the first installation with you and tell you what other libraries you're going to need. Now for the Wi-Fi, we're going to need the Wi-Fi Nina library. So type in Wi-Fi Nina. And that should bring the Wi-Fi Nina by Arduino library up over here. And we can click install for that. And our library is installed. Now, as I said, we have a number of other libraries to install. You'll want to install the Arduino LSM 6D S3 library. That's for the inertial measurement unit. You will install the Arduino RTC0 library for the real-time clock and the Arduino BLE library for the Bluetooth. And of course, all of these libraries are listed on the article accompanying this video on the DroneBot Workshop website. Once you've done that, we're ready to use the Arduino IDE with our Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Now that we've installed our boards manager in our library, it's time to test out our installation. So hook up the Arduino Nano 33 IoT to your USB port using a micro USB cable. Once you do, you should notice this flashing light over here at the top. And that is the built-in LED on the board, the equivalent of pin 13 on the Arduino Uno. And it is flashing the blink sketch because a brand new device has been loaded with the blink sketch. We're going to use the blink sketch to test our device, but of course, since it's already blinking the blink sketch, we'll need to modify it a bit to make certain that our modifications are really being picked up. So I'm going to change the timing on blink from a thousand milliseconds to 500. So it's should cause it to blink twice as fast. Now, you're going to have to have gone already into Tools. You're going to have to select the Arduino Nano 33 IoT as your board, and you're going to have to also select the port that you're connected to. I've done that already, so I'm going to upload this to the Nano 33 IoT. And as I'm uploading, you can see the lights flashing. And there we go, and we're blinking at twice the speed, so we've succeeded in uploading the blink sketch to the Arduino Nano 33 IoT using the Arduino IDE. Now one way that the Arduino Nano 33 IoT differs from the previous Arduino Nano is that it has integrated Wi-Fi. Another feature of the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is it has a built-in real-time clock. And while these two features may seem to be very distinct, and they certainly are, we can actually combine them. And so we're going to look at both of them right now. We're going to look at the Wi-Fi, and then we're going to look at how we can use the Wi-Fi to set the time in our real-time clock. So let's get started. In order to test out the Wi-Fi capabilities, we're going to run a simple sketch called Scan Networks. Now, as the name implies, this simply scans for all the Wi-Fi networks in the area, so you don't have to give it any parameters because it's not connecting to any of these networks. Now, this sketch is available as one of the example sketches that came with the Wi-Fi Nina library. I found it a little odd as to where it was located, so I'll show you where that is. You can go to Examples, and if you go to 
down through examples, you will actually see Wi-Fi Nina down over here. It is not a, considered an example from a custom library. So just to be on alert for that. And if you go down over here, you will see our sketch. And that's the scan network sketch over here. I've got it open on the screen right now. And it's a pretty simple one, really. What it does is it uh, installs the libraries. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that aside from the Wi-Fi Nina library, it also installs the SPI library and we need to use that because the uBlocks module is actually connected to the processor via SPI so every time you use Wi-Fi with this board you'll also need the SPI library. You don't need to define the connections though because the Wi-Fi Nina library will take the care of that for you. Essentially we're setting up the serial port because we are going to display this on the serial port. We're checking the Wi-Fi firmware, printing the Mac address and we're going to go into the loop over here right now where we just scan for networks and we run a function called list networks so the real action in our sketch is in list networks list networks is just going to scan the networks it is just going to look at the number of available networks and it's going to iterate through those networks and for each one of them it's going to print the ssid it's going to print the signal strength and then it's going to print the encryption type now in order to print the encryption type it calls another function down over here and that just simply takes the encryption type type and prints it into a more user-friendly format over here. There's also a function down here to print the MAC address in a format that is uh, very readable. And so we'll just upload this to the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. There's really nothing more to do that. And then we just run our serial monitor at 9600 baud and observe the results. And here we go. We're scanning the networks. And as you can see, I have a number of networks available to my Arduino 33 Nano IoT. Of course, they're all encrypted, so I would need to know the encryption code for them. Now, you'll notice on mine, this is not an error. I have three networks up over here called DBWS Net. That is my network. I'll leave it to you to decide what the DBWS stands for. And you'll notice there's three of them. That's not an error. I have a mesh Wi-Fi system, so I have three different repeaters. And what you're seeing is the relative signal strength of those repeaters. Now you'll notice that one of them is very, very powerful, and that makes perfect sense because it's right here in the workshop with me. So it's literally about two meters away from the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. But this is a very simple method of determining that your Wi Fi module is working and that you've got everything connected correctly. And now we can go and do some more interesting things. Now here's a very simple sketch we can use in order to connect to our Wi-Fi network using the Wi-Fi Nina library. And what the sketch does really is it illustrates how we use this library. We'll start off by including that library as well as the required SPI library. And then we need to define our Wi-Fi credentials, our SSID and our password. SSID is your network name, by the way. After that, we will go and initialize our Wi-Fi client. Now, we've got a number of functions underneath here. One of them is connect to access point, and that simply connects to the Wi-Fi access point. And here is basically how you do that. You just do a Wi-Fi begin, and then you pass your SSID and password. You wait, and you should end up getting connected. Now, another function we have here is to print the Wi-Fi status over to the serial number, and we're just going to print out the SSID and the IP address that we have been given by our router through the DHCP or Dynamic Host Control Protocol. Now we'll go into the setup and we'll show you how we set everything up. We start our serial monitor. We check the Wi-Fi status to see if it's okay. As long as we have status, we're fine. Otherwise, we have to print out that the module has failed. And then we call our connect to access point. We'll call the print Wi-Fi status. There is no code in the loop because everything is executed in setup. So let's go and take it our serial monitor and we'll see what our Wi-Fi status is over here. So I'm going to open my monitor. And we're connected. And we have a Wi-Fi address that has been dished out by my router, or in this case, by my mesh network. 
And so this is a very simple demonstration as how you can add Wi-Fi to your sketches on the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Now this is an interesting sketch in that it demonstrates both the operation of the Wi-Fi and the real-time clock. And we're going to be using our Wi-Fi to set the real-time clock. We can do that because our Wi-Fi signal has an embedded NTP service in it, or Network Time Protocol service. And we'll use that to determine the current time and display that. Now the current time on the Network Time Protocol service is actually not listed in hours, minutes, and seconds and date. Rather, it is an epoch number. An epoch number is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the 1st of January 1970. And this is how most Unix and Linux systems determine what time it is. And so on our sketch, we're going to start by loading up the libraries. Now we need the SPI and Wi-Fi NINA library. We're also going to use this library as well to get that NTP signal. And we have the RTC0 library for the real-time clock. Now you're going to need to provide your Wi-Fi credentials over here, your SSID and your password. Now remember, this all gets compiled before it goes to the Arduino, so it's not really a security risk. You could also put these into a separate file and just call it from this file and some people like to do that and that's kind of handy especially if you're going to be distributing your code up to a repository like github where you don't want to tell the world your ssid and password and then after that another thing that you may need to adjust is this constant over here and that is your offset from gmt now i am in eastern time in north america so my offset is negative five hours yours of course will differ depending upon where you are in the world and there is a link in the article accompanying this video on the dronebotworkshop.com website that will lead you to a resource where you can determine your offset if you don't know it already now we just have a few functions over here to make things pretty print time this formats the way we print the time and print date does the same thing for the date now, print Wi-Fi status is very similar to what we looked at earlier when we did the scan network. We're just going to display that at the beginning when we start everything. And print two digits is just simply a function that will add a leading zero in front of a digit if it is less than 10. And we need that in order for our times and dates to look pretty. Now, in the setup, we're going to start the serial port, and we start the Wi-Fi, establish a Wi-Fi connection, and then we start the real-time clock. We, we use this unsigned long to determine the epoch, and we get the epoch over here using the Wi-Fi get time signal, and then we print out what has happened over here. If, uh, We've got the epoch, we print out the epoch received and what it is, and then we go into our loop. In our loop, we just call our print date and print time functions. We do a carriage return with a print lin, so we leave a blank space over here, and then we delay for a second and do it again. So the net result should be, we should just continue the print, the date, and time constantly. Now I've already uploaded this, so I'm just going to open my serial monitor, and we'll take a look at what we've got. And it's already gone down to the loop where it is printing out the time. Now those of you who are very observant might notice the clock up here on my computer, and the clock over here, and you'll notice it's exactly one hour off. And the reason for this is because if you'll notice it is May right now and we are in daylight savings time. So we are indeed an hour off. But this is a very simple method of uh, showing how both the real-time clock and the Wi-Fi can work together. And it might even be a practical project if you wanted to replace the serial monitor with some sort of a display. You could have a clock that is always synchronized to your Wi-Fi network. Now one unique addition to the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is the inclusion of an IMU or inertial measurement unit. Now this is a relatively simple IMU. It can act as an accelerometer on three axes and it can also act as a gyroscope on those three axes. It does not however have a magnetometer inside it so you won't be able to measure magnetic field. However the library that comes with this IMU is very easy to use 
use and really simplifies the operation of this device. So let's go and take a look at a couple of very simple examples for using the IMU on the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Now to demonstrate the usage of the IMU, there are a couple of sketches that come with the library that we installed for working with the IMU, and that's the LSM 6DS3 library from Arduino. You can go and get those sketches just by going into File, going into Examples, and once again, it is just right here at the top, Arduino LSM 6DS3. And you'll see we have both a simple accelerometer and a simple gyroscope. And as they imply, they are very simple sketches because all of the heavy lifting, so to speak, has been done from the library. So here's a simple accelerometer sketch. And as you can see, it includes the library, sets up the serial port, and then it prints out the acceleration sample rate, which it gets from the library. And then we go into the loop and we simply present uh, the acceleration on the X, Y, and Z axis and print it out. And again, we use read acceleration from the IMU library. So the library really does everything for us. Now, this is similar for the simple gyroscope as well. If we go and take a look at that sketch, you'll see it's essentially the same thing. We set up our serial monitor, we take a look at the sample rate and print it out, and then we go and print the X, Y, and Z axis on the gyroscope with the read gyroscope command. So these are two very simple sketches. We'll upload both of them to our Arduino 33 IoT, and we will take a look and see how they work. Now let's demonstrate our gyroscope. We're going to use our serial monitor to get a reading back from it. And as you can see, we are getting reading of three different axes. And as I move the device, that reading will change. I can rotate it, and you can see the different numbers. And this is pretty fascinating, although it's a pretty, pretty difficult thing to digest with all these numbers coming in very, very quickly. So there's another way we can do that, and that is to use the serial plotter. So let's go and close the serial monitor and open the plotter, because you can only have one at a time. And as you can see, the X, Y, and Z axis are now in the plotter. And as I move everything, it's a much more interesting and more graphical display than the one that we saw at the monitor. And it's a little easier to digest how things are moving on the X, Y, and Z axis over here. So a very simple demonstration of the gyroscope, and it seems to work very well. All right, well, the demonstration of the accelerometer is very similar to the demonstration of the gyroscope. And here we have the three different axes on the serial monitor. And I'll move the board. And we can see the acceleration is really being displayed. You can notice sometimes the values are negative, and that depends on what direction I'm going in. And once again, this is more easy to digest if we use the serial plotter. So here's the plotter. The board is at rest right now. I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it. And again, I'm trying to accelerate with the board because it's acceleration, not speed that it's measuring. And again, we can see a graphical representation of the acceleration on the three different axes. So another example of how easy it is to use the IMU on the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Now the final feature of the Arduino Nano 33 IoT that we're going to be looking at today is the Bluetooth capabilities. And these capabilities are provided by the same Ublox module that provides the Wi-Fi capabilities. And of course, internally, that is using an ESP32 device. The Bluetooth on the Arduino Nano 33 IoT can act either as a peripheral or as a central Bluetooth controller. So let's go and take a look at a few examples of using Bluetooth with this microcontroller. Now one very easy way to test the Bluetooth operation of the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is to use one of the example sketches. And the one that we're going to use is one that scans for any Bluetooth peripherals. And I will show you where the sketch is and explain it a little more to you. If you go down to the file and you go to examples, 
and scroll down till you get to Arduino BLE. Now you'll notice it's divided into two different sections, central and peripheral. And the reason for this is this is how Bluetooth operates. With a Bluetooth connection, you have one device that is the central device, and you have one or more peripheral devices that communicate with the central device. Now, when you're using Bluetooth the way you usually do with your phone or your tablet or your computer, the phone, tablet, and computer is generally the central device. And your peripheral device would be things like headphones or keyboards. Now, we're going to go into the central for this particular one, because we're going to scan for peripheral devices and it's the scan sketch over here and as you can see I've already got it open over here now what the scan sketch does is as you imagine goes out and scans for any Bluetooth peripherals and there are a couple of parameters you want to bring back first of all you want to bring the peripherals address back every peripheral will have a unique address Secondly, the peripheral may or may not actually have a name, and you can bring back the name. And the third thing you want to bring back is one or more advertised services. And this is how the peripherals in Bluetooth work. They advertise the services that they provide. So, for example, a headphone might advertise that it provides an audio type service. We're just going to scan through all of these things, print them to the serial port, and then go back and repeat. So everything here is pretty well done in the loop. As you can see, the only library that we need to include is the Arduino BLE library. So I've loaded that up to my, our, to my Arduino Nano 33 IoT. I'm going to go into the serial monitor and see if we can find anything here. And I'll reset the board right now. And it's discovered a few peripherals right now. And it's given me an address and a local name for some of them. It's still looking, it's still discovering things. It actually goes for quite a while to discover peripherals. And there's one that's discovered here. I found this one amusing, the Bose Revolve Sound Link. I don't really think that's actually mine. I suspect it's one of my neighbors because although I own several pairs of Bose speakers, none of them have Bluetooth capabilities, nor do I own any Bose Bluetooth headphones. And so, as you can see, this sketch works very well for determining if we can see Bluetooth peripherals, and it also demonstrates the operation of the Bluetooth on the Arduino Nano 33 IoT. Our next experiment is actually going to require a hookup, and we are going to require two Arduino Nano 33 IoTs. Our first one is going to be the central controller for our experiment, and the second one is going to be our peripheral device. You will also need a 10K resistor, a momentary contact push button switch, an LED, and a dropping resistor for the LED, which I use 220 ohms, but you can use a similar value. We'll begin on the central side, and we'll connect the 3.3 volt output to one side of the push button. We'll connect the 10K resistor to the other side of the push button, and we'll connect the other side of that resistor to a ground point. Finally, we'll connect data connection D2 to the junction of the resistor and the push button switch. On the peripheral side, we'll connect output D13 to the anode of the LED. The cathode of the LED will be connected to one side of the 220 ohm dropping resistor, and we'll connect the other side of that to ground. And this completes the wiring for our experiment. Now to run our demonstration, obviously we're going to require two sketches, one for the central device and one for the peripheral device. And you can find those example sketches over here. Go into examples and then go down to the Arduino BLE and you will see it is divided into central and peripheral as we've noted before. Now in central you want this one, LED control, and in peripheral you want the one called LED. I've got LED control over here, so this is the one that works on the central device. So this one has the push button and it establishes a connection with the peripheral and sends information to it whenever the button is pressed. Now it's a reasonably simple sketch and it's fairly well documented so you can understand what's happening. It includes the Arduino BLE library, that's the only library needed, and it defines a couple of uh, integers and constants here for the button pin and the button state. 
And then in the setup, we set up serial monitors. We set the button pin as an input. Incidentally, they could have written this to include the pull-down resistor, and you wouldn't have had to use it on your circuit board. But since they didn't, I added the resistor. We initialized the Bluetooth, and we start scanning for a peripheral with this huge UUID. And while that may seem rather cryptic, you will notice on the LED side that we use the equivalent address, or the equivalent UUID. Now, in the loop, we check to see if uh, Bluetooth is available. If it is, we print out the address of the peripheral and everything. So we're going through to look for the peripheral, and we keep scanning. And then we call this function called Control LED, and we pass the peripheral value to it. And that is really where the action on this sketch over here is. This control LED, first of all, does a number of things to make certain that you've actually connected to the peripheral, and it needs to discover the attributes of the peripheral. Once it has discovered the peripheral with its attributes, it's going to get the characteristics, and it's looking for the characteristic again of this long string number over here. If it does have characteristics, we pass through this point over here. So a lot of this is just checking to make sure that we have a good connection. And this is the actual meat of what happens. If we're connected, we'll read the button pin over here. If the state has changed, then we know that the button state has changed. And we'll print out button pressed to our serial monitor. And then we go and we write the value to that LED characteristic, and we're going to write a value of 1 over here. It's hexadecimal 1, but it's a 1 anyway. Otherwise, when the button is released, we're going to write a value of 0 out to it, and then print out if the peripheral has actually been disconnected down over here. Now let's go and take a look at the other side of it, the LED sketch. Now on the LED sketch, again, we start a service off with this huge cryptic number. So this is how the two of them mate with each other, with the two UUIDs. We send out the characteristic. We advertise that. Uh, we define a pin, of course, for our LED, and we're just using the LED built-in. So you'll notice I've connected this to pin 13. You actually didn't need an LED on the second one. You could use the onboard one, but I just think an external one's easier to see. Now in the setup, we set up our serial monitors, set the LED pin as an output, of course, and we start the Bluetooth. And we set up our advertised local name and service because this is what a peripheral does. It sets this up and then the controller tries to connect to it. So we have a local name, LED. We set up our advertised service and we add our characteristic to it. And we start advertising all of this. And then once we're all set up, we go into the loop and we listen to see if we've connected to the central. If we have connected to central, we'll print out its MAC address. And then while the central is connected, we will take a look to see if anything has been written to it into this switch characteristic. And if something has been written, we take its value. Now, if the value is anything other than zero, you remember we sent it a one, but we could have been sending it a two or three, it would have been fine. We'll turn the LED on by setting the LED pin high. Otherwise, if we get a value of zero, the LED will go off. And if we happen to be disconnected, we'll print that down over here. So most of the activity in this particular sketch happens in the loop. So now that we've seen the two sketches, let's go and take a look at a demonstration of them in action. Now here's a demonstration of our Bluetooth central and peripheral devices. And as you can see, I've got them on two solderless breadboards, one that I've labeled central, one that's labeled peripheral. So it's pretty obvious which is which. My LED here, my push button there, and if I push the button, Indeed, it does control the LED. Now, the serial monitor I have right now is set up to the central one, so it's just telling me the button's pressed, the button's released. I can go and change the port because I've used a USB hub to hook both of them to the uh, computer right now. So let's just go in whoops, and change the port here. And now it comes out as the peripheral one. And every time I press it, of course, we just get an indication the LED is on or that the LED is off. So the demonstration itself is very elementary, but it does show you how you can use the Arduino Nano 33 IoT as both a central Bluetooth controller and as a Bluetooth peripheral device. 
Now, one of the key features of the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is a feature that I haven't really discussed today, and that's its ability to be connected to the Arduino Cloud. The Arduino Cloud is an Internet of Things service that Arduino provides, and a number of different boards have been certified to connect into the cloud. And by doing that, we can control these devices as IoT devices. Now, the Arduino Nano 33 IoT is the only one of the new nanos that is certified for use on the cloud but rather than talking about it in today's video I want to do a complete other video and article about this because it is such a vast subject however if you're anxious to get started with the Arduino cloud I do have some information in the article that accompanies this video which you will find on the dronebotworkshop.com website and there's a link to that article right below this video when you're on the website please consider subscribing to my newsletter I send out newsletters occasionally just to let you know what's going on in the workshop and I'll be sending you one out in a couple of days explaining what I've been doing for the last month. Also if you want to discuss this video the place to go is the DroneBot workshop forums. It is ideal to discuss things on the forums as opposed to on the website or on YouTube because then everybody can share in the knowledge and the forum is a collection of wonderful people who just love to talk about electronics and if you're not a member we would love to have you join there's a link below the video where you can find out how you can join the forum and of course it is completely free and finally if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel well what are you waiting for just hit that subscribe button and also click on the bell notification and as long as you have notifications enabled on your YouTube you will get notified every time that I make a new video so until we get together the next Next time, please take good care of yourself. Please stay safe out there, and we will see you soon here in the Drone Bot Workshop. Goodbye for now. Bye.